Okay, so we're moving to the next person, Bob Spence, sales professional um, from Get Spence Limited. And Bob will be talking about creating sales performance in a crisis. Welcome to the Wolves uh, Summit. My name's Bob Spence. It's an absolute pleasure to be addressing you. I've got 15 minutes and I'm going to talk to you about business development in the current uh, scenario. Just briefly, I'd like to uh, say to those of you that haven't been involved in the online networking, it's been absolutely terrific. The online networking for business development has been terrific and it's all credit to Mike Chaffee and the team uh, for making it work, which is kind of an example of something very good happening out of adversity. And that's what I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to talk to you in for 15 minutes about the adversity and sales. Now, I guess that you're thinking, well, what would someone uh, sat in London uh, drinking tea know about uh, software sales in Poland? Well, I'd know quite a lot. Um, I've been to your country over 75 times, and I also sell software on behalf of a Polish software company, uh, Rainmaker Pro. So I know more than some and less than others. And the first thing to think about is that every single shlotty that your company has is an outcome of sales. Every shlotty today that your company has, it's an outcome of sales. In one of three areas, it's either an outcome of sales revenue, that's one, or it's VC funding that's the outcome of a sales business plan, or three, it's money borrowed that was the outcome of a sales plan to leverage money. So selling at the moment, it's it's everything. It's everything. It's everything. Now, right now, what's going to happen is one of two things. One of two things. And I can tell you what those two things will be. Either as sales professionals or co-founders, you're either going to come up with the skill of generating reasons why you're not getting sales results. So you're either going to manufacture the skill of generating reasons for not getting sales results or the skill of generating sales results in spite of the reasons. And I think there's going to be some people over the next 24 months that are going to make their reputation as sales professionals. Um, I write with Katarzyna Lanucha from Cambridge University and we'll be uh, doing some more stuff around software as a service, what we call the procurement landscape. So over the next 12 minutes, I'm going to talk to you about these four things. So it's the procurement landscape. It's the buying landscape. What has altered? What's happened? Now, I've seen this before. I've seen this before. So I'm going to show you some measurement systems. Then we're going to look at what this means to you guys making sales. And I've seen this before. And then we're going to look at two little toolkits. One is how to survive and the other is how to thrive. Okay, so let's see what we can cover. So in the first instance, and I thank Dilipa Ranawaki for these figures, we've got a different procurement environment. And what's happening, it's this. I think we all know this. The figures may be different in the United Kingdom compared to Poland or different parts of the EU, but we've got this, we've got this virus that's performing there. That's what it's doing to our procurement landscape. It's doing it to our procurement officers, decision makers, team meetings. It's doing it to buyers. It's doing it to the ops guy, the procurement guy. It's doing it for everybody. That's what we're all exposed to. So essentially what's going on is this, and this is a real key thing. It's a key thing. This is not a health update. This is about the sales environment, the procurement environment. We're going through a situation where all the governments are trying to keep the cases down so they don't go above the treatment capacity. It doesn't matter if you're in Lublin, Dublin, or London. It really doesn't matter. That's what's going on. Every health professional you can interact with will show you some figures that will show this is going to happen more than once. It could be that the second outbreak is less than the first or the third outbreak is less than the second, but there's a consequence. There's a consequence. There is a consequence, and the consequence is essentially this. You need to start looking at what is this doing to my sales pipeline? What is it doing? What is going on? 
and you need to get to the bottom of it very, very quickly. And those of you that do will make good decisions. And those of you that don't, won't. So let's have a look. New sales. New sales, there's five variables when you make a new sale. And I'll tell you what it is. You've got the prospects. This is the people that you can talk to. That's going to be affected. Second, how many of those prospects can you turn into first meetings? That's going to be affected. Number three, how many of those first meetings are going to turn into customers? That's going to be affected. And of those new customers, what's going to happen to the deal size? That's going to be affected. And across that, you've got how long does this take? I'm in two sectors, health tech and law tech. My typical sales cycle is nine months. That was nine months before this. Now, let's just see what this could mean. It could be, and I think this is modest, that the amount of prospects available to you, available to you has gone down by 30%. So what's available to you in terms of prospects is down by 30%. The number of those that convert into first meetings is down by 20%. It's down by 20%. Those that turn into new customers, it's down by 15%. I want you to think about this. These are very, very modest figures. It's modest. It's modest. The size of your deal contracts and the frame for doing the deal, it's now expanded because people are taking longer to decide because they have to. Look at that, man. 64% down in revenue just from those slight, slight increments, slight increments, slight increments. First thing you've got to do is look at those five features of your sales pipeline, the five features of your business development, finding prospects, how you hold a first meeting, the conversion rate into new customers, and those new customers, the type of deal you put together, and the length of time it takes. And you need to be working on how do I solve each one of those problems? I can't solve it for you in this brief podcast. It's what I do for a living. You need to solve that. You need to get around the table tomorrow at nine o'clock with a coffee and say, what are we going to do about these five things? For those of you that are in the outsource sector, where you might be looking at what I called retained revenue, it's very, very simple where you get retained revenue from. You figure, you take the previous income, and let's say it was 500,000 shloty. So last year, you got half a million shloty. Your retention rate is about half of the customers stay with you post the uh, contract. Now look at this, the length of contract. Now these are going to go down in this environment. They definitely are. If those were the features of your retention, current retention program, that's what you've got. That's what you've got. A third of a million shloty lost in revenue. You need to start looking at retention rates now, not tomorrow, not next month, not at the next board meeting or when you get a phone call from the bank manager or the VC. If you're in business development, you need to get on these figures now. I was involved in the 2007 banking crash and the 2001, 2002 dot com crash. I know this. You weren't exposed as much to that in Poland. You need to get these figures now. Next thing, how to survive. All right. Well, let's have a little look at survival. We've got six and a half minutes left. Oh, boy. How do people buy? You need to start buying into how do people buy? It's not about sales models anymore. No, right now, when there's a a reduced amount of money available, how are people going to buy? How are people going to buy? That sales presentation, that marketing stuff that you've got, put it back in the drawer. Work out how are people going to buy? Now, this model has got six segments to it, six, okay? And it all starts off with, what is it that people require? Now, you need to understand this. You need to get together with your team. And I tell you one thing that you need in the room, as much gray hair as you can lay your hands on. You need people in the room that have been here and done it. Been here and done it before. What is the change of focus 
on the procurement requirement that affects your business. What is the change in procurement requirement that affects how people buy from you? What's the change of focus? Get around a table, have a brainstorm, have an online session like this. Get together. What's going to be the change of focus that's a consequence of this? Number two, how are people going to select? How are people going to select? How are the procurement officers selecting now? There's going to be different benchmarks. Brainstorm, work it out. What are the new benchmarks post this pandemic or during this pandemic? What are people going to measure? Okay, what are the new gates that we have to pass through to get a deal? What are the new barriers? What's the resilience to buying from us? What does that resilience look like now? What is that resilience? What can we do about it? How do we construct a deal? How do we construct a deal? There's going to be changes in preferences of how people spend their money. What does that look like in a negotiation? Go through all the experience that you've got and role play it through. How does this sound? Where will this go? You've got to prepare, prepare, prepare much more now because the number of leads that you've got is going to go down. How do you onboard new clients? The way people accept change now is different. I can't tell you how different it is for what you're doing because I don't know. But I do know that onboarding, it's going to alter. The way people are inducted, it's going to alter as a consequence of what's going on. Have you changed your onboarding processes since this happened? If not, nine o'clock tomorrow, get round a table, or if you can't do that, get round some webcams with a coffee. What does our onboarding need to look like now? Finally, how are we going to retain our clients? Because the whole relationship thing, which so many transactions are built on, it's been disrupted. It may even be disrupted forever. All right, let's move on. I think I've got time to show you a couple of things. I'm really trying to keep this to the point. Now, you've got to look at where can you play? Where can you play in this new world? You've got stuff that's highly profitable and stuff that's highly possible and stuff that's unlikely and stuff that's impossible and stuff that makes less money. You're with me. I know you're with me. I can see you with me. You've got two environments left to right. Stop, go, speculate, examine. Let's have a quick look. You need to look at where your clients, current clients sit in that matrix, number one. Number two, where do your current offers sit in that matrix? Number three, whereabouts are you selling? Are there geographic differences or the sector differences? Because what's going to happen is this. That's right. It's all going to move around. It's going to move around. It will. You need to look at the procurement process and start looking at where should we go? Where should we stop? Where should we speculate? And what do we need to double check? And it's going to be things like that. Profitability is around the size of the urgency and the strategic value. And the possibility, it's around... Uh, risk alleviation and the new decision cycle or change. Okay, I'm going through this really quick now. I've got two minutes. Okay, this is the big one. This is the big one before I wrap up. This is to do with getting in front of people. So what happens is before you've got this balance where someone's thinking, a prospect's thinking, well, the cost of the conversation, it's actually outweighed by what I think I'll get out of it. On the other side of the barrier is the benefit of the conversation outweighs the cost. We all know this. Anyone involved in business development knows you have to get through that barrier. You've got to get some bandwidth. This is what's happened. Oh, no. It's pushed right across. It's pushed right across. So you've got to start thinking about how do I remain relevant? Now, I'm just speculating there. It could be you need to identify the urgent needs in your sector from a procurement perspective, from a procurement perspective, from a procurement perspective, what's urgent. It could be continuity tools. It could be outsourcing becomes more urgent. 